question four. In question four, we're going to work to the same hypothesis testing as we did in the previous question. This time, we're going to take a look at um, a hypothesis test involving two sample group. So we have two columns of information. Each column represents a sample. So in the example that I have in front of me here, I have weekly salaries of uh, employees in Waterloo location compared with the weekly salaries of employees in the Etobicoke lo locations. Right. So we're going to compare the these two sample groups and figure out if there's any significant differences in the salaries they receive. In a previous example, in a previous question three, we only had one column of sample group which we compared with a population expectation. In this question four, we, are, we have two sample groups and we are comparing the two groups to figure out if in fact there is any significant differences in how much they get paid. So let's take a look at the question. At 5% significance level, test the hypothesis that there is a significant difference in the weekly salaries between Waterloo and Etobicoke locations. Again, some of you might have a different wording to this. They might have, some of you might have more than or less than or significant difference, right? So in the case of this, I have significant difference. So that should let you know that you are looking at what? A two-tail test because a significant difference is an indication of you looking at a parameter in both a uh, side of the of the mean, which means more than or less than situation. So that is a classic example of a two-tail test. So we're going to go through the same steps as we did before uh, uh, in question three. I mean, it's going to be a repetition of that. So to conduct this test, we go to data, data analysis, and we're going to select t-test assuming equal variance. And again, this is so because we've been asked to assume that the differences between the two, the, there's no differences, but the variances are equal. So we're going to take that and then click on OK. We just have to take out all the values in this. You have to delete that to have a clean um, range. So again, the first box will select the first sample group. The, the second input range will represent the sample for the second group. And then again, your hypothesis size mean difference will be zero. Again, this is your null hypothesis. And if the assumption is that there's no significant difference between the two, then that means that the difference should be equal to zero. So we always have zero as the hypothesis mean difference between the two. And then again, make sure the levels are checked. The alpha is 0 0.05, which is equal to 5%. And then the input range, just going to select any blank spot here to display my results. So I'm just going to click on OK. And again, the result is displayed as follows. So, so we have the Waterloo and the kitchen as the salaries for Waterloo locations and the salaries for the Etobicoke locations. So just highlight just to make them look a little bit different. All right. So again, in order to um, uh, reduce or decrease the decimals 
places there are so many decimal places so i have to basically reduce the number of decimal places to make it easy to read so i will highlight this and click on this function which gives you decreased decimal so that you have fewer decimal places keep two decimals is fine and I'll do the same with that if it's too much you just increase it if it's a little just so that this is the in decrease and that's your increase so two decimal places is very good enough so we can see that the average salary for the Waterloo location is 1534 compared with the average salary of a tobacco lo location which is 1107 right so the question is do you think these two numbers indicate a significant difference between the two salary locations or they are essentially the same so the null hypothesis will stipulate that the two numbers are the same basically there is no significant difference between the two however the alternative hypothesis will have state that the two numbers are significantly different so for that reason you have a two-tail test and as a result when you are selecting your critical value which is given in two forms as t critical one tail T critical two tail this is what is going to hold for this particular test the T critical for two tail and also for the p-value I will have p-value also will be p-value for two tail All right, so that's the p-value for my two-tail and the uh, critical value for my two-tail. For the test value, this represents my test value. So that represents my test value. So then I go in to complete the box the previous questions state the null and alternative hypothesis justify your choice of statistical method which we know that to be a t-test because the population standard deviation was not given determine the tail test which we know that to be a two-tail test because the parameter is looking for significant differences and the significant differences means you're looking at both less than or more than scenario and then establish the critical value the critical value in this case is what we've established as 2.02 .02. calculate the test value which is obtained as 2.24 and then make the decision so in this decision because the critical value the test value is more than the critical value we will have to reject the null so the concept is that when a test value is more than a critical value for a one for two tail test in that regards we have to reject the null in that case because we are looking at the on the plus side of things um, now when you are asked to state the critical value for a two tail the, there's going to be two critical values for two tail which means the, there will be negative 
0.02 and positive 2.02 right so your two tail will have two critical value which will be plus and minus 2.02 so if the test value falls within this range then we have to accept the null however if it exceed the upper limit which is in this case positive 2.02 then we have to reject it and you can see that the, the test value of 2.24 is more than the upper limit of our two tail critical value so in that case we have to reject the null and conclude that the two salaries are significantly different Be now we also have to make an interpretation for the p-value which we have it as 0 0.03 again 0 0.03 means 3 percent in percentage wise is 3 percent and you notice that the rules stipulate that if the p-value is less than the significant value then we have to reject the null and this goes to confirm that a three percent is less than five percent so again it goes to confirm our decision that we need to reject the null in favor of the alternative hypothesis uh, the error margin is just three percent although the maximum limit allowed for rejection is five percent so with actually have less error than what is pre-established. So that is essentially what uh, question four is about. It's similar steps as we've looked at in chapter three. You can also refer to the, power, the same PowerPoint slide um, for uh, similar decisions, like the same steps involved in, in, in as previously we've looked at.